is Islam, all meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the circle seven in love, truth, <clears throat> peace, freedom, and justice. Everyone who is able to please rise and face the East for the Moorish American prayer. As we stand, we have our heels together, feet at a 45 degree angle. And then we hold up two fingers on the right and five on the left in a cactus pose. And please repeat after this brother. Allah, the father of the universe. Allah, the father of the universe. The father of love. The father of love. True. True. Peace. Freedom. Freedom. And justice. Allah is my protector. Allah is my protector. My God. My God. And my salvation. And my salvation. By night and by day. By night and by day. Through his holy prophet. Through his holy prophet. Through Ali. Ali. Amen. All right, Islam, Moors, Islam. All right, I want to announce this meeting is now open. This is the Moors Science Temple of America, Temple 30, Columbus, Ohio. First and foremost, we always rise, giving the highest praise to the Most High, our Father, God, Allah. We extend honors to our divine prophet, Noble Drew Ali, for bringing us our divine creed and nationality so that we may learn to love instead of hate. We also extend honors to the forerunner to the prophet, our brother Marcus Mosiah Garvey for preparing the way for purity and love. And we extend honors to the great Moorish and American flags. And we also extend honors to the charter and its 10 wonders. We extend honors to the first appointed Supreme Grand Sheep by our prophet, our brother E. Millie Ill. And we also extend honors to all the members of the Moore Science Temple of America, including all adepts, all sheiks, and all the faithful Moors that make up the grand body of the Moorish Divine National Movement. And we extend honors to the current Supreme Grand Sheik and Supreme Grand Council of the Moorish Science Temple of America Islam. Brother Jackson Bay, please read our divine constitution and bylaws. Islam Grand Sheikh, I rise giving perfect praise to Allah. I answer the Prophet Jurali, I answer the forefathers and foremothers, and I answer the Asiatic nations and the Muslims all over the world. Salvation, Allah, unity, the Moorish Science Temple of America, the Divine Constitution and Bylaws. Act 1 The Grand Sheikh and the Chairman of the Moorish Science Temple of America is empowered to make law and enforce law with the assistance of the Prophet and the Grand Bible. Moorish Science Temple of America. The assistant Grand Sheik is to assist the Grand Sheik in all affairs if he lives according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And it is known before the members of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Act two, all means are to be open and closed promptly according to the circle seven in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Friday is our holy day of rest because on a Friday, the first man was formed in flesh. And on a Friday, the first man departed out of flesh and ascended unto his father God Allah. For that cause, Friday is a holy day for all Muslims all over the world. <clears throat> Act three, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice must be proclaimed and practiced by all members of the Moorish Science Temple of America. No member is to put in danger or accuse falsely his brother or sister on any occasion at all that may harm his brother or sister because Allah is love. Act four, all members must preserve these holy and divine laws and all members must obey the laws of the government. <laughs> Because by being a Moorish American, you are part and partial of the government and must live life accordingly. Act 5. This organization, Moorish Science of America, is not to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws and constitution of the said government, but to obey hereby. 
uh, Act 6 with us. All members must proclaim their nationality. And we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed that they may know that they are part and partial of this said government and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians. <laughs> because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained Noble Drew Ali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites, whom inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Act 7. All members must promptly attend their meetings and become part and partial of all uplifting acts of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband. You must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, Noble Drew Ali, through the guidance of his father, God Allah. Noble Drew Ali, founder Moorish American prayer, Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day. Through his holy prophet, Jurali. Amen. The Moorish Science Temple of America, home office, Noble Jurali, home office, Chicago, Illinois, USA, Islam, Islam, Islamism. Happy holiday, Muslims. All right. Gratitude, Brother Jackson Bay. Uh, for the sister that just joined, uh, says Chantel Evans. Please, in the chat, <clears throat> share your name, location, and email or phone number. All right. Okay, uh, moving on. Brother Kobe, would you please read the writs of our prophet? Islam, Grand Sheik, I rise and give perfect praise to the great God of Allah. Rise and give honor to our prophet, Noble Juali. Rise and give honor to the forerunner, Mark and Zayat Gar Harbinger. Rise and give honor to all ills of bay, all. Moors on the call and on the planet. Proper ones, all Muslims to be read in every meeting. I hereby inform all members they must end all radical speeches while they're at work, in their homes, or on the streets. We are for peace and not destruction. Stop flashing your cards to Europeans, it causes confusion. Remember, your card is for your salvation. Failure to obey these orders will be a severe consequence. We are for love, truth, peace, freedom. And when these principles are violated, justice must then take its course. Any member or group of members who hold malicious feelings towards the temple or the prophet or violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement will receive their rewards from Allah for their unjust deeds. All true Moors will and must obey the law laid down to them by their prophet. If they lose confidence in their prophet, they should turn in their card and button cease wearing their turban and fez and return to the state where I, the prophet, found you. This is a holy and divine movement founded by the prophet Noble Jew Ali, and the prophet is not right, the temple is not right. The prophet, therefore, is sending out a divine plea to all Moorish Americans. They do their part in protecting the movement and the temple. This is an everlasting movement founded by the prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sinful ways. Peace, Noble Jew Ali. To the members of the Moorish Science Temple of America, Islam, this is instructions from your prophet, Noble Jew Ali. Be faithful unto your forefather, divine and national creed, that you will be blessed for your good deeds that you sow in the flesh. Allah is the one that judges the world, and his judgment is on now. Now, but the weak can comprehend it not. Then the times are drawing near, so says Allah to his divine prophet, I know will draw Ali. And that's why many hearts have turned to stone. Many have eyes to see, but cannot see, ears to hear, but cannot hear. At least they will be confounded of their sins. These are the trying hours now, dear Moors, and every evil spirit is moving, and they are trying every weak mind to overthrow and drag out the true foundation that has been laid and to cause confusion in the minds of the ones that do believe. But if you have the true love of Allah and the spirit of your forefathers, you fear not what you hear or see, 
but will sacrifice the utmost of your very life to protect your movement and your profit. Watch your enemies, dear Moors. Your enemies are the ones that speak against your prophet and ridicule him to the very lowest, and the ones that speak against your divine and national principles of your temples. Act accordingly, and Allah will bless you for your good work. Peace, your divine prophet, noble Juwali. To be proclaimed in every meeting. Islam, I am glad to know a few faithful Moors among you all and desire for them to know the truth and the divine truth. There's a host of jealousy about me and the movement now by the same people of our side of the nation that claim that I was a joke and unreal. But now, since they found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth. This is the only sole foundation that all Asiatics must depend upon for their earthly salvation as American citizens. They are working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so they may take charge of the situation. I have notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful Moors that attribute to the movement and uplifting funds. The ones that pay their divine respects to me and the movement will be remembered. That's why I'm calling upon all faithful Moors to increase their faithfulness to me, your prophet, and your divine Moors movement. I need finance and I need it badly. Never before have I need finance so badly as I do at present so I can shove aside the discord that is facing the nation. It all comes through my through the jealousy because of my fame and nobility. The nations of the world will not recognize the movement without I, the prophet, being head. It has been proven by my works what I have performed in the past few years. Prophet, noble Juwali, Islam, 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 or happy holy day. And with these writs, I do want to warn more as if they are on social media that we are going through a lot as Moorish Americans with our brothers, the Israelites, Islam. Islam, brother, in gratitude. Sister Lachey El, would you please read our additional laws? Islam, I rise giving all praise to the great father God Allah. I give honors to our holy prophet, Noble Juwali. I give honors to all the faithful Muslims on the call and all around the world. Questionary and additional laws for the Moorish Americans by Prophet Noble Juwali. Act 1. Grand sheiks and governors and heads of all temples, all business. He said temple must be approved by the Prophet Noble Juwali. Before acting upon by any members, let it be finance property or any line of life that will cause the members to sacrifice finance ETC. That will cause the support of any group of members. Any formal officer that violates these laws is subject to be removed from his office under a heavy restriction, ETC by the prophet or the grand sheet. Act two, all members are to attend their EDEP meetings and their public meetings promptly. If a member is found standing around on their meeting period, shall be fined 50 cents on the first case. And on the second, he will be fined $1, which will go on your emergency fund. If member is working, his monthly dues must be paid. And if he has money in the bank, he must subscribe as much as he is able to the Morsh uplifting funds because it takes finance to uplift the nation. Act three, it is a lawful and divine duty of every good member if he is able in finance to aid me and save the nation. And if he does not, he is an enemy to the cause of uplifting his own people and justice must catch you. Let it be he or she according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice as I have the power invested in my hands and I would have to enforce the law in order to save the nation. Act four, all members while up making a public speech must not use any assertion against the American flag or speak radical against the church or any member of any organized group because we are to teach love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Act five, all members must promptly attend their meetings and send their children to Sunday school. And the teacher must confirm itself to the questionnaire and let every member exercise his five senses who is able to do so because out from your Sunday school comes the guiders of the nation. Act six, with us, all member, members must proclaim their free nationality and we're teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed 
that they may know that they are a part and parcel of this said government and know that they are not Negroes, color folks, black people, or Ethiopians, because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained Noble Drew Ali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Act 7. All members must properly attend their meetings and become part and parcel of all uplifting acts of the Moorish Science Temple. Members must pay their dues and keep in mind with all necessities of the Moorish Science Temple, then you're entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, Noble Drew Ali, through the guidance of his father God, Allah. Islam, happy holy day. All right, Islam and gratitude, sister Islam. Okay, so um, <clears throat> for anyone who's new here, if this is your first time attending a meeting, we go over Quran um, lessons from the the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America. We do that every Friday. Friday is the holy day for us, and um, we go over questions. Or excuse me, we go over the Quran, whatever lesson we're doing that day, and um, then we open up the floor to questions. So, you know, if people have questions in general, feel free to ask them after we go over the Quran lesson. Um, hopefully, though, everybody will have um, greater understanding after our discussion today. Uh, we're going to be in just going briefly over different parts of chapter 47 and 48. Okay, more. So if everybody who's able to Please turn to chapter 47 in your Quran. Okay, and um, the reason why I want to go over those two chapters in particular is to, um, so that we all have a greater understanding of what this nation is that the prophet created for us. Um, the bounds of the nation, like the 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 boundaries, you know the uh, you know what landmass is it? What where is it? Um, and how it relates to us? Okay, um, what qualifications must be met? You know to have it because to um, be considered for statehood in international law, there are prerequisites. So when we went over like the. Um, for all the members, when you, when you go over the um, the membership orientation, it should list that maybe maybe it speaks about Bouvier's law, but um, it should speak about the prerequisites for nationhood. So there's certain qualifications that have to be met for everyone, all over the world, right? To be considered a state, a, a you know a nation gov capable of governing yourself, you got to have a landmass. You have to have actual boundaries even if you've been you know colonized or something like that you still have to have that you know there has to be a national identity that, that you can that people um can be governed of the, under right you, you have to have law and structure and order and people that will abide by it right so there has to be an actual government um capable of making laws that people will abide to and um you have to be recognized, um, like for example, as a um, regular, just a solo person out here, you have to be recognized by those people in this nation that you claim to be a part of. And then that nation has to be recognized by the family of nations, the other nations in the world, they have to recognize it. And you have to be capable of sustaining yourself with your own, your own economy. Okay, so these are just some of the things, but I want to go over this because um, <laughs> a lot of this is touched on in chapter 48. 
And this is why there's so much confusion going on out here. Now, um, as we go into chapter 47, the prophet is um, in the beginning of chapter 47, we're given our divine history, our ancient and divine history. Okay, now this is a history of our people that's been hidden from us. It's still hidden from us. Um, when the Europeans went out to different countries, going throughout Africa, coming, especially as they um, discovered America, coming throughout the Americas, one of the first things they did everywhere they went, they burned the books. They went into, we had libraries. There were libraries over here. You wouldn't even know that though, because they wiped it out and told you that the Native Americans lived in teepees and they were all uncivilized. You wouldn't even know. They had universities over here, libraries, temples, cities. We weren't living in teepees. Not saying there was nobody living like that, but those were nomads. We had towns, we had cities, we had government, we even had running water. And so I'm only saying that because they destroyed those records and the ones that they didn't destroy, they put them in the Vatican, they put them in the vaults, they, they put it under the museum, right? They didn't put that on display for everyone to know. And so these records of who we are were hidden. Did they disappear completely? No. So the prophet um, says in the um, beginning of the Quran, well, first off, it says divinely prepared. So he's not saying that all of these things are things that he just wrote off the top of his head, right? Some of these are ancient records that have been around. Okay, but he said divinely prepared. And I'm saying this because in the Quran, he says he received these lessons from somewhere. Anybody know where I'm getting at with that? So he received these lessons from the East. He received these lessons from from um from Egypt, from India and Palestine. Okay. But the secrets were or the keys, as he says, when the time appointed by Allah, they loosened the keys and freed the secrets. And for the first time in ages have the secrets been delivered in the hands of the Muslims of America. Right? Because we we don't even know that we're Muslims here. A lot of us, you'll hear Moors online that well, Moors don't have to have a religion. You know, and that's cool, yeah, go for it, right? I'll tell you what though, when somebody says that, that lets me know, like I'm, y'all seen the meme where Homer Simpson's backing up, he's walking backwards into the bushes. Anybody ever seen, that's that's what I'm doing with people saying that, because that lets me know like right away, I don't even want to be around that person, you know? You know, because Islam helps us to clean ourselves up to work to be better people right in islam we we want to we we desire or we we work to submit to the will of allah and we we desire to subdue our own lower self you know so you know as we do this work on on ourselves right we now have um you know the ability to if if Moors live up to what they're supposed to do as Moorish Americans, now that means that when when you meet a Moor, you're supposed to be able to trust them. We can work together. We can do business together, right? You're not. It's, it's not supposed to be so bad that you you don't even want these people around your children. Let alone having communities together, right? We don't want to build communities with everyone, not even our own people. So you know they're coming at you, especially. They saying they're more, but they're not with subduing the lower self. Oh, I'm I'm backing up like Homer Simpson. I don't want nothing to do with you. And we definitely I don't want to be your friend, your neighbor, none of that. It's not all good. So we're working on ourselves, Morris. That's what I'm saying. It's 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 not all good out here. And so with all the information that's out here, this is what I really wanted to get into in chapter 47. Um we're giving some information, some hidden information about who we truly are. The prophet was talking about things that the Moors are just now starting to talk about. You know, stuff that's gaining more and more traction. You hear more and more people, uh, so-called black people, start to realize that they are indigenous to the Americas. Prophet Noble Drew Ali taught us this in 1928. 
he even he even goes a little further than them because now some of them are just now starting to realize your grandparents weren't lying when they said they had Indian in them, in them right? And we we were so stupid that, or I shouldn't say stupid, but we were so lost that when you heard, you know, your grandparents or your parents, depending on how old you are, great grandparents telling you that they they had um, Indian in them, we're thinking that means they mixed because we were so lost. We look and thinking that Indians are people who look like they could be white, right? That oh, that's why you got the good hair. Not even thinking that this that you're talking about your own people being indigenous to the land. So now, you know, a lot of more of our people are just starting to get catch wind of this and starting to realize they didn't bring us all over on slave ships. The prophet taught this nearly 100 years ago because he really did have our ancient records. And so going into chapter 47, verse 6, I'm going to skip some of this, this stuff, all of these verses are important. So I advise everybody to read all of this, but I'm going to skip down to this part for a reason. So in verse six, the Moabites from the land of Moab who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to inhabit and settle and inhabit Northwest Africa, they were the founders and are the true possessors of the present Moroccan empire with their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brethren who sojourned from the land of Canaan seeking new homes, their dominion and inhabitation extended from Northeast and Southwest Africa across the great Atlantis, even unto the present North, South, and Central America, and also Mexico and the Atlantis Islands before the great earthquake, which caused the great Atlantic, Atlantic Ocean. And the prophet also says that Ni the river Nile was dredged and made by the ancient pharaohs of Egypt in order to trade with sur the surrounding kingdoms. Also, the Niger River was dredged by the great pharaoh of Egypt in those ancient days for trade, and it extended eastward from the river Nile westward across the great Atlantic. It was used for trade and transportation. Okay, so this is a lot of information. A lot. So the prophet is letting us know that our ancestors, all right, the Moabites from the land of Moab, received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa. And this is also, this is letting it be known that the bounds of what we would consider Egypt was larger than what we see now. When you go to a map of Africa, you see, um, you know, the modern day boundaries of the nation state of Egypt, okay? And that has limitations to it. Hang on, I'm trying to get this up on the screen. Hang on. Okay, so um, here we go. Okay, gratitude. So um, what this is letting us know is just, um, first off, the boundaries of Egypt much larger than the present day map of Egypt. Like this, okay, this is a good one, right? So you see right here, right? Egypt is just there. But the, hang on. Okay, but what we see in chapter 47, right? Just by the um, the land that the Pharaoh has, um, has dominion over, right? Talking about the whole entire Northwest Africa. And then later on that their dominion and inhabitation extended from Northeast and Southwest Africa, across the great Atlantis, even into the present North, South, Central America, Mexico and the Atlantis Islands. So all of these are within the bounds of the pharaohs of Egypt. So this is letting you know that Egypt wasn't limited to that one land. And it said pharaohs of Egypt, plural. So it wasn't limited to that one area, 
right? Egypt was much greater than that because um, what the prophet is talking about when he's saying Egypt, it was a worldwide civilization, which I'll get into in a second. But it, it, the, the boundaries were greater because this was an ancient civilization. It was a worldwide civilization. It wasn't limited to this one area. All right. He tells us that the Nile, Nile River was man-made. The Niger River, which is in West Africa, was man-made. Then he says that the Niger River extended across the great Atlantis. Extended across, right? And so we, we just when you look at the, uh, the currents, the river currents that are in the oceans, you actually have currents that um, sailors know, or at least they knew, that you could just ride that current and it would take you from one end of the map to the next. So from one continent to the next, the easiest way to travel is to ride those currents, to know where those currents are. So when he's saying that the Niger River was man-made and that it went across that Atlantic Ocean, it's actually there. So the river currents are still there. And um, once again, just to bring this back into, um, or to put this in a proper light, the prophet was teaching this to our people in the 1920s. So this wasn't a joke. So people now with the internet think, you know, thinking we smart. Oh yeah, we always been here, right? Th this was already known. This was already understood. So people are now just now starting to get caught up to where the prophet was at in 1928. Islam, brother Kobe, I see you. I yield the floor. Islam, I'm raising grad, the highest uh, honor than prophets to the great God Allah and the prophet Noble Juali. I just wanted to come back on that. Just in science, and we're scientists, if you look at it in the aspect of just say, if you have a small clog and you're in your shower, if you have a small clog in your shower and you have like a little piece of hair or debris, you notice it always drags towards you and you being a landmass. So even if you flush it away with your foot, it keeps coming towards you, the landmass. Islam, so we got to kind of think that as far as like how our ancestors looked at how to control the seas. If you know how the sea runs, if it runs in that circle, it's going to pull towards you. So now if I know this magnet, how it's pulling towards where is it pulling towards and where do I need to go? And that's going to tell us, as far as the current, where we need to go. Islam? Islam, brother. Islam. And gratitude, brother. So um, just going back to this. Now, the prophet was giving us this information back in the 1920s, you know? And, and for some of us, even back then, for some of us, it was too, it was too much information. It really was because the prophet had to go out and then put out some of the proclamations like what you heard brother Cole Bay reading at the beginning, right? Because for some of us hearing this information, you know, it's all great, it's, it's wonderful, and, and we're getting confident, um, you know, we're feeling great about ourselves. And some of us wanted to go out and demonstrate, right? Now, now uh, the members here at Temple 30, you, you've seen this before, but this is an old newspaper article from May, 26, 1928 in Richmond, Virginia. Now remember the prophet Noble Drew Ali had his, um, the home base or home office was in Chicago, but in Richmond in May 26, there was uh, something that made the front page. It says, Prophet Mosby in the toils of the law, Mohammedism and his teachings charged with disorderly conduct at third and least lay street, had no permit to pre preach on the street. So it's saying Mosby, this guy, he um he was encouraging the Asiatic people, our people, to to be bitter towards the United States flag, which they had on one side and a red flag with the crescent in the center on another, right? Which isn't the the Moroccan flag that we fly, the Moorish flag, excuse me, but they're they're still flying the star and crescent, which obviously represents Islam, right? And they're saying Mosby had a book ritual or Quran. Um, just some of the stuff in here. This was on front page news because you have so-called Negroes getting out here and speaking radical 
and speaking with confidence. <laughs> this guy's out here attracting crowds. It was presumed that the case will attract much attention should the prophet from Chicago come to the city to represent Mosby as it as it is alleged he claims he will. So this guy's talking radical, right? He's got some charter, says Morris Temple of Science of the World. He's got a charter. He's out here and he's um he's getting agitated. He's he's radical. He's speaking radical. This is why the prophet had to put these proclamations up to try to get us to calm down, right? And he's saying the prophet is going to come and represent him and get him out of trouble. And it says in here, it just says, fearing a riot last night when a group of Negroes at Third and Lake Street were urged to dishonor the American flag. Now, we don't do that. The prophet doesn't teach that. You heard us. What did we do? We said honors to the Moorish and the American flag. We don't do that. The prophet set us up to secede. This is why it's not just go do whatever you want to do. No, we have law and order and structure here. So he was urging people to dishonor the American flag and live under the red flag of the Moors. And he's up there on the, you know, it says a 35 year old Negro from a ladder as he exclaimed to hell with the American flag down with the white people. We don't call anybody by colors, anyone. Because there's some people claiming to be Moors that say, oh, I, I'm, they, they went and did some paperwork right they they went in and, and changed their race to white like we, we're not playing the color game at all right so um and i'm not going to read the rest of this but i'm just showing you that this was going on then and it's going on now now that there's a resurgence now that people are starting to find out who they are people are starting to have, have ask questions and somehow some way people are coming into this understanding that they are Moors, even though this was not taught to us, it's been hidden away. They thought that it would be gone. You know, those who wanted to attack this movement, they thought that it would be gone, but it's still here. And somehow we're all here right now, right? By divine order. <clears throat> and I'm sharing this because with some of this, what some of this information does to us, you know, it, it, it makes people feel great, feel good. And, and feel like you could just go out there and just do your thing but like you have to bring it back in we do have law order and structure here uh one uh real quick okay sorry about that i guess we're good okay so um just coming back into this so some of this stuff may have been too much information okay it made some people go off the deep end and coming back into the present, you know, with the internet, there's so much information out there. Everybody's hearing all of these things. Okay. But I, we're, we're coming to chapter 47 and 48 because there is law and order and structure to this. So with the prophet letting it be known that the pharaohs of Egypt, right, they had dominion that extended all the way to Northeast and Southwest Africa, right? Wasn't just that little that little area where Egypt is, and even across the great Atlantis, even into the Americas, all right? And did our ancestors receive permission from them, meaning, you know, they had a connection to Egypt. They received permission to come over here. And that they've been over here um, before European conquest, before colonialism. Why? Because it says that we were here. Dominion and inhabitation are actually legal terms right establishing our dominion all right this is our land mass this is where we are from this is where we are indigenous to okay and that it predates european colonialism because we were over here before the great earthquake which caused the great atlantic ocean which once again um this is this is going into something even deeper right i mean he he calls the the caribbean islands the atlantis islands and that we were over here before the earthquake which caused the atlantic ocean which which goes into an even more ancient civilization right some of the things that the, the europeans call mythology with atlantis so we have ancient civilization and then we're connected to that we were over here before that earthquake which caused the Atlantic Ocean. So before these continents split apart. All right. And it's important that this was given to us. And according to all true and divine records of the human race, 
there's no Negro, Black, or colored race attached to the human family. Once again, erasing this myth that we can just go along with these labels that have been placed on us by the Europeans. Why did they place those labels on us? This was all a part of doctrine and discovery. This is what the Europeans did. Um, you had the papal bull that stated that any land not inhabited by Christians was available to be discovered, claimed, and exploited by Christian rulers. And then it also declared that the Catholic faith and the Christian religion be exalted and be everywhere increased and spread, that the health of souls be cared for and that barbarous nations be overthrown and brought to the faith itself. Now, the barbarous nations, those are the Moors, right? So everyone had to come under the Catholic faith. Everyone is deemed savage. Everyone had to go through this process. And this is the doctrine of discovery, right? So the prophet is shooting all of that down, but he's doing it in an intelligent way. Okay. Um, Islam, Brother Kobe, I see you. I yield the floor. Islam, I got a picture of Grand Sheik uh, of a map uh, that I have in my living room. I have a picture of a map in my living room. And it shows above the equator, and it shows the the north, and it shows the whole North America. And at the top of North America, it says Mexicana, and that's in Canada, way in Canada. It says Mexicana, it says Mar Mardella, and it says Norta, and it says Norta all across the top of the first part of the equator, and then under that. It'll have India under that, and that's over when you come to Africa and Asia. It'll have that aspect, and it's showing like two coins almost, like the heads and tails. But it's showing even in their aspect of what they're printing, and then it'll show you have an Indian on one side, and you got a soldier on another side in North America, like that they're doing the, the doctrine of the discovery. Like they like they didn't even know about the area. They just know about what they painted when they came. And I'm gonna take a picture of it and I, I I'll give it to you guys. Islam. Islam, brother, that's powerful. Yeah, definitely share that uh, when you're able to. All right, Islam, brother Yabe, uh, I yield the floor. Islamism. I rise to the highest heights, giving all perfect praise to the all the Almighty Father Allah, and honest to Mobile Draw Lee and all the divine prophets. I was trying to look for it on here and see if I can make a copy of it. But I went into the um the library in Harrisburg. I'm from Pennsylvania. And my cousin told me about this book, the Encyclopedia of Pennsylvania. I went in there, opened it up, first page, first line. Says the inhabitants of Pennsylvania for Asiatics, Islamism. Wow, Islam, brother. Yeah, definitely. If you're able to get a picture of that, I you said it was at the library. I know you know might not be for a while, but if you can get a picture of that, definitely send that through. Appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. So, um, you know, our name was erased, it's not just the name that we have for ourselves or so a label was created that diluted to slavery, um, any religion, any cultural ties, anything that we had, all of that was to be obliterated, all right? And the doctrine of discovery is no joke because, you know, for the most part, it's still in play. That was the basis for all the European claims in the Americas. Like that, that was the foundation for European expansion. So the, you know, the United States, for the most part, that's like, a that's a continuation of the, you know, different colonial powers right? right. The, the indigenous people here only had the right of occupancy. That could be abolished at any point in time. So the prophet is establishing our true dominion. And it's not dependent on what other people agree with or think of, because we have our own true and divine records. This is why it's a problem when you have people out here who like, oh, I don't, I don't care about the prophet. I do my own thing. I found, I saw a YouTube video. I watched someone, I saw someone on the internet. We have a holy book. 
we have a prophet, you know, one from amongst us speaking our language to deliver us the, you know, the, the true and divine um, records, right? Divine law. And then you have some so-called Moors that don't even want to respect it. Now, how, how does that work, right? That's what I'm saying. I'm backing away from these, you know, I want to call them fools, but I'm not going to say that, right? I'm trying to be a better person. So I'm just backing away from these Moors, like Homer Simpson, like, nah, get away from that. Hey, don't come up to me trying to, we, we all Moors. No, not really. Yeah, kind of, but no. No, it's not all good. No, you can't just, oh, I'm a Moorish American. Everybody recognize it. No, you can't just file a bunch of paperwork and say, oh, I'm a Moor. I'm recognized. That's not how it works anywhere. You know, the, you know, the, the Native Americans, you know how much paperwork they had between them and the Europeans? They had treaties. People want to say, oh, the treaties, the law of the land. Yeah, that sounds nice on the internet, but in real life, you know how many treaties the Native Americans, the so-called Indians had with the Europeans? And you know, anytime they felt like breaking it, they felt like, hey, we want that land. They took it. And treaties weren't worth any more than toilet paper. Okay, you know what you do with toilet paper. That's what the Europeans did with the treaties. So no, the treaty is not really the law of the land. It may be for them when they want it to be. But no, no. So if we have true and divine records, we have divine law. If we're not holding to it, it's a problem. Right? I can't even kick it with Moors that don't hold it to divine law. Not just because they're savage, you know, because that's the main reason, but also you you don't hold to what's true. This is true for us. This is law for us, right? So when the prophet's saying we were over here since before the great earthquake, which caused the Atlantic Ocean, I don't need some European to go and prove that's true for me to know that he's saying that we, we the ancient Atlanteans. I don't need that. No, I know that. So then when we do our research and we find like, you you guys saw that, that picture, um, it was a stone carving of a man wearing a fez and he got the tassel and everything. And that was over here in the Americas, right? It's an Olmec statue. So when we see these things, we understand, we can trace ourselves through history. We don't need them to verify it for us because they're not gonna verify anything for you, right? We have to verify it. We have to make it real. So going back into this in chapter 47, right? The prophet said, all true and divine records of the human race are according to all true and divine records. There's no Negro, Black, or colored race attached to the human family. We see that still true. We see that in Federal Directive 15. They still have us disconnected from the human family. Everyone is, in, you know, from the government perspective with the race, race and ethnic groups, everyone is connected to an original people except Black. Black is connected connected to the racial groups of Africa. That's not a mistake. So the prophet is still correct. They just can't say it as openly as the prophet. It's in there, it's hidden, but it's hidden in right in your face, right? So we're, we're going back to our true and divine records because what your ancient forefathers were, you are today without doubt or contradiction, meaning once again, we don't need anyone's validation. We're not going and begging Arabs to you know, the pale skin Arabs, because the true Arabs are dark skin, like, you know, would have looked like the so-called black people. But, you know, we, we don't need, you know, to beg them to recognize us. No. No, the prophet said that we are, <coughs> excuse me, that we are, or, or our ancestors were the founders and are, are meaning present day. They were the founders and are the true possessors of the present Moroccan empire. We don't need anyone else to co-sign on that for us. We don't need anyone else to validate it for us. This is what I'm saying. You can't leave this out, man. There's so many, you know, I'm I'm not saying this for no reason at all. Rogers, I know there's information out there now. People are like, well, I don't even need to do this. Right? But it's like, look, okay, the information is one thing, but the application of it, right, actually making this real, making this a part of your life, that's how it works right so this is what makes it real these are our true and divine records this is who we truly are this is divine law for us nobody 
can do anything to hinder us from doing what we see fit to to live our life you know in freedom um to to be able to be successful in everything that we need for ourselves that's guaranteed in the constitution every man is endowed with these rights through his creator right for life uh liberty and the pursuit of uh happiness islam brother kobe i yield the floor this long ground she can just let me camel back on that just a little bit just if you think about that as north if we think about that look in your walk through life on how you walking as a more anybody around you when you walk in as a more you're going to have a lot of people that's going to be gratitude like say if you wear your feds and you walk around uh, in florida you walk around with the feds since the soccer was going on everybody thought that you really were from morocco so if i wore feds and i was going to my daughter's recitals of anything they would think that and you let them know no i'm more american now in the other aspect of our people even now even with our people they would decide to just tune out because they would rather deal with what's going on on lower self and try to talk about that and debate lower self this is the thing and i'm gonna actually really get to doing podcasts with more and stuff about that as far as our people our people have a lot to do with the negative of well i wouldn't even call it negative like grand chic said i would just call it lower self so if we're just so in doubt with the lower self that we're just oh i'm just gonna tune out to everything else but i want to still try to justify the lower self to being higher self you cannot do that as Moorish Americans. That's black, negro, and color. And the prophet already told us if that's the case, you turn your button and card and sees where you're interpreted fits. That's part of the risk. And I, I I see that and I walk with that because a lot of our Moors, we do want to play it the fool by half. And we do want to look at the light of who we are and say we are that but not want to do the work and the walk so we do have to do that work and walk more and it's not a hard walk you just gotta take it step by step islam are you on the floor islam brother islam you you know i agree and um you know just um to to reiterate on that with what you're saying like the work that the brother's talking about is on subduing our own lower self. And we we always show this in here, but um, you know, that's what ancient Egypt was all about. It was all the symbology, you know, even entire temples, like the Temple of Man in Karnak, even the pyramid, the Great Pyramid, like you had all of these buildings and carvings, everything was about subduing your own lower self, your own carnal nature. And if you read our Quran, the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America, that's what it's all about. There's a huge, you know, portion of it that it's all about subduing our own lower selves. And this is what the prophet brought us right before um, before he announced himself in, in Chicago. Um, he used to be in New Jersey. He used to have little cards that he would give to people that said um, um, uh, Thomas uh, Drew the Egyptian agent, Adep, right? So he's bringing this Egyptian, as it says on here, gnosis, the knowing, the understanding, this true understanding to us. Okay, this is ancient. It's all about subduing our own lower self. You can't leave that portion out. Nothing that people try to do is gonna work. And see, for us, there's no separation of church and state. The Europeans, um, not knocking the Europeans, but we have to tell the truth. So the pale skinned nations of Europe, they have to deal in the secular realm the secular the non-religious and the non-spiritual right so there has to be a separation of church and state they have to keep it real they can't deal with that they can't deal with the divine you know not saying that they don't have religions and things of that nature but they have to separate it right but us with our ancient civilizations we did not do that we don't have the separation of church and state in ancient egypt the olmecs every all the ancient societies they had a priest king and that king is surrounded by a priesthood he's maintained by the priesthood in ancient egypt 
the priesthood was called Moors. They, they were actually called Moors. The priest of Anu were called Moors. And the priesthood maintained the um, nobility class. They basically maintained who was, whoever. So they're the advisors for the king. And they're the ones that are making the laws. Why? Because we don't separate how we govern ourselves from the divine, from spirituality. Right. So when they're making buildings, even when they're planning out cities, all of these are to be in divine order. It's not like today where we just making plastic and just throwing it in the ocean and and doing all of these things that are out of order, out of natural law. Right. We didn't do it like that. And so once again, you can't leave this whole portion out. Right. We don't separate state and church. So for us, yes, the temple is a part of our government. You can't separate that. When you do, you're just copying the Romans. You're just copying, you know, Western civilization. And that's not going to work. It's not working right now. Everybody knows that. So going back to chapter 47, what your ancient forefathers were, you are today without doubt or contradiction. Now, in the positive direction, the prophet is letting us know who our ancestors were, the great things that they have done. And it doesn't matter what labels like Negro, Black, colored, African American, right? It doesn't matter what labels have been placed on us now. We are what our ancient forefathers were. All right. Because if you if you black, all right, if you want to go along with that, because no one can actually change your descent nature unless their power extends beyond the great creator Allah himself. But if you want to go along with that. That means that you're a slave because black people descend from enslaved Africans. That's how they were defined in law. And that's why still to this day, they're making slave movies and slave TV shows, right? They just put the Will Smith movie out, Emancipation. They got some other new movie too. I, I, I forgot the name of it, but it was another one. It was another one that came out. This one with Kiki Palmer, where she plays some woman who like, was living in like the 80s and didn't even know that slavery was over. Right? So she escapes the plantation. And it's like they still making stuff like this. They're still doing it. Right? I think they even got a new TV show, a new slavery TV show. So this is the mindset they want to keep the people in. And not saying it's like we can we can get everyone to to wake up and everything like that. No, I'm just saying like, you know, this is what they tried to do, right? The prophet is pushing us in the other direction. So even if you know you're a more, if you're not following these divine instructions to do that work on subduing your lower self, you're just a Roman. You're just pretending to be a Roman, pretending to be a more, pretending to be a Roman, pretending to be a more, that's it. Right. These holy and divine laws are from the prophet Noble Drew Ali, the founder, excuse me, the founder of the Uniting of the Moorish Science Temple of America. These laws are to be strictly preserved by the members of all the temples. Now, membership is synonymous to citizenship. Members of all the temples of the Moorish Science Temple of America, citizens in what? The Asiatic States of America. All right. So going back to this, that they will learn to open their meeting and guide it according to the principles of love, truth, peace, freedom and justice. Every subordinate temple of the grand major temple is to form under the covenant of love, truth, peace, freedom and justice. And to create their own laws and customs. So this is letting it be known every subordinate temple. So you have temples everywhere. But then when all the temples or all the temple heads come together. That's the grand major temple. And we form under these divine principles and create our own laws and customs in conjunction with the laws of the holy prophet and the grand temple. This is showing us how to govern ourselves because at the end of the day, okay, we have the, the uh, divine constitution and bylaws, the additional laws, we have supreme laws, we have general laws. And then we make laws in each of our areas as long as they're in conjunction with these divine laws from our prophet so this is showing us how to govern ourselves okay um let me go to 48 
So just um, to end this off, and just skip around to 48. Um, so the prophet's showing us, you know, how we run ourselves, run our government. Hang on a second. All right. And um, a process has to be undone. So just like that picture that was up on the screen, you know, to becoming a Christian, right? Putting down your own, your own turban, your own headdress, putting down your scimitar blade, your sword, and then coming up under the European, right? Getting, you don't even realize, like your ancestors may not have realized that they're being civilized. The uncivil, the savage is being uncivilized. They don't realize that because they still knew who they were. They knew they weren't uncivilized. But this is what's really being done, right? They're becoming, they're coming under someone else. This, this, the European is becoming your creator, right? So there was a process. So therefore, we are returning the church and Christianity back to the European nations as it was prepared by their forefathers for their earthly salvation. We know that, you know, Christianity, as we, as we practice it here, Right, what was forced on us, the different denominations, the Baptists, you know, the Protestants, Catholicism, all of that. We know that as practiced by the Europeans, that was formed for their earthly salvation. They had to take on an origin an organized religion. They had to have a system of spirituality to show that they were civilized, that they can deal with the rest of the people, so they can participate in trade, so that they can now conduct international business and so that they can prosper. That's what it was formed for. Right. But we, while we, the Moorish Americans, are returning to Islam, which was founded by our forefathers for our earthly and divine salvation. Okay. The covenant of the great God Allah, honor thy father and thy mothers that thy days may be longer upon the earth land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Come all ye Asiatics of America and hear the truth about your nationality and birthrights, because you are not Negroes. Learn of your forefathers' ancient and divine creed that you will learn to love instead of hate. We are trying to uplift fallen humanity. Come and link yourselves with the family of nations. We honor all the true and divine prophets. So just going back to this, we with this process that we went into to become Negroes, Christian Negroes, right, modern day Blacks, we had to undo that process and come into our own Islam sister. That's in Acts 6. So um, since we're looking at this, though, what come and hear the truth about your nationality and birthrights, what is our birthrights, right? Is, is, is nationality a birthright? Morris, please, some, somebody in Temple 30, please answer that. Is nationality a birthright? Is it no. Birthright? Islam, brother, please, please expound on that for us. Can Islam you give an is like a I'm sorry. My name is right. Can you give an My example of our birthright? Islam. 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 And I, Islam. Our demonstration of our birthright is our creed. And our creed is our five principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And on our, more, our, our mothers and our forefathers that we will be able to get in this earth plane in harmony and salvation in Islam. Islam, brother. And what, what does it say in chapter one about our birthrights? Uh, Islam, uh, sister, I see a hand raised. Islam, sister. Islam, first and foremost, I'd like to rise and give perfect praise to our Father God Allah. Honest to his prophet, Noah Jali. Honest to the forerunner of the prophet, Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Honest to the first appointed Supreme Grand Sheik, Brother Emily Ill. And honest to all you Muslims in attendance on this beautiful holy day. Um, our birthright is man is the... Um, man is, is the... <laughs> Why can't you get it out right now? Um, is the Lord of the plane of manifest Islam, and that right there tells us that we are supposed to awaken to our position as the head of everything on this earth plane, Islam. But we gave up our birthright to gratify our lower selves. So what happened in the process of being born here on this 3D dimension um, as God's for real, because God is within all of us and 
the God part of us is here to observe and experience life as humans, right? So that we can solve problems. And um, that's what it's all about. So we gave up our birthright to come here to get stronger and to overcome things. So that's why they say God would never put you um, through something that you can't, you know, that's not gonna make you stronger. You know, if it don't kill you, it makes you stronger. We all here to, to observe and go through trials and tribulations so that we can get the lessons because the blessings are always in the lessons. Once we come out of it, we always come out stronger and smarter. So that's definitely why we're here on this earth plane to experience everything that we're going through because without a foe, the soldier never knows the strength. So you can't get stronger and know your strengths and your weaknesses if you don't come here and live. Islam, I the floor. Islam, sister, yes, definitely. Um, well, well put and um, explained. So um, nationality is not really a birthright. The prophet is giving us something even greater than that. Why would we want to limit ourselves to that? You know, just like um, how we gave up our birthrights, right? Because um, going to chapter one, creation and fall of man in our Quran says, man is the Lord of all the plain of manifest, of protoplast, of mineral, of plant, of beast, but he gave up his birthrights just to gratify his lower self. This is our true birthright to Lord over all of this. So a protoplast talking about it, that cytoplasm, that, you know, microscopic level, meaning we can control all of that, of mineral, of plant, of beast. We have dominion over all of that and control over all of that, even at a level that we may not truly understand. We are far more powerful than um, what we see at the present. All right. But we gave up that birthright just to gratify our lower self. So that means that we, you know, to the point where we are now, where we are, you know, controlled by our lower self. Why? So that we can overcome it, rise back up, okay? And just to re, um, just to add some more to that, this is also mentioned in the Quran. We always speak about Surah 230. You look at Surah 2 verses 30 through 34, when Allah is speaking to the angels, he says, I'm going to place on the, in the earth a Khalifa. A Khalifa is the word that they use. Um, it's also translated as vice regent or vicer. Okay. But this, this Khalifa is, is a lead, is, is, is a Lord, is someone who's ruling on behalf of God, Allah. Okay. And he places this Khalifa there. And then he tells the angels to bow down to him, to prostrate to Adam. So we have dominion over all of this. In the Holy Quran of the MSTA, it states that our birthright is to be the Lord of all the plane of manifest and of soul. The Quran is corroborates with this <coughs> Quran of Mecca. It says that Allah even made the angels bow down to man, who is the Khalifa or the vice regent on earth. So it's very important that we complete this process where the prophet returns us to Islam, not returning us to the customs and cultures of people who may not even be truly practicing Islam, Right, but we are vicers, we are vice regents. And you're looking at Catholicism, the Pope is the vicer of Christ. That's it. Just the Pope. Right? Um, the Pope is the divine authority. He's standing in for Jesus. Okay. That's it. And um, the Pope vacated that title. Remember, more as we talked about this, he vacated that title, he dropped that title of Vicer of Christ. And this was recent. This was as recent as 2020, Pope Francis. And this is from, um, I believe this is from, a, yeah, this is from a Christian website. It says, in a surprise move, Pope Francis has dropped the historic and essential title, Vicer of Christ, from the 2020 Pontifical Yearbook, the Holy See's Annual Directory. Rele relegating the title to a footnote, calling it a historical title. So he's not even using that title anymore. And that title meant that he is the stand in for God, right? And as a Christian, whether you realize it or not, that's what you're up under. 
you're still up under the doctrine of discovery. So we don't need that because we know that we weren't born in sin. Muslims are not born in sin. We don't believe any of that. We're returning to the root. This is why I'm saying you can't leave Islam out. If you do, you are just a Roman or uh, you're, you're an Asiatic person pretending to be a Roman, pretending to be a Moor. You are confused. You have no idea what this is really about. Not saying this for anyone is here because we're all learning and everything, but no, it's deeper than you thought, right? So we're returning to this because yes, we're all, we each and every one of us is a vicer of, of Allah, a vice regent, a caliphate, okay? But you can't leave that process out. It's extremely important, it's integral. So as we return to Islam, it's a universal religion. It's not limited to the desert or any other region in the world, any other language or culture. It's universal and it's the truth. Islam, I yield the floor, Brother Kobe. Islam, Sheikh, I give all praise to great God Allah. And just want to come back again. This is a great bill. Because when it comes to just us, as far as we really don't touch down on spirituality, and that's what we're doing tonight when it comes to more science. More science is very simple. Islam, our Islam is very simple, Islamism. It's the acting of peace. So when you do act of peace, you can see a lot of things. And then when you do really sit back and see a lot of peace, because then you can see yourself, even in time, time never was what man wasn't. I mean, that's all in all the prophets. Uh, teachings and when we go back to that and did in all aspect to all moors i would just say simply just walk through whatever lesson that fits you walk through that one and then walk through another one and then walk through another one it's like we don't we only have uh 48 chapters walk through them once you start walking through Islam, I wouldn't even have to tell you anything. You would know yourself. And that's what the prophet was saying, to teach the people to know their self. And if I can teach you to know yourself, then, then that's all that I need, I need to do. And this is a great build on that, on the spirituality, on the unlocking of what the prophet teaching is. Islam, I yield the floor. Islam, brother, gratitude for sharing that. So um, just going back to that um, original question that was posed, speaking about our birthrights, our true birthright is to be Allah's representative on earth, to rule on Allah's behalf. So for us, you know, seeing that the Pope dropped the title of Vicer of Christ, whatever, right? We, we know that we are the Vicer, we are the ruler for Allah on earth. Okay, and so um, we know that we must do work to live up to that. We must work on subduing our lower self because we cannot truly rule if we are ruled by our own carnal nature, Islam. And so this is um, this is what the prophet returned to us so that we can do this on the um, personal level for each and every one of us in our households and then to rule our communities like this off of these same divine principles. And this is why, once again, this is something that's, you know, to us, it's of the utmost importance. It's integral. This isn't just something that we just see online, right? This is something that we live. Um, the sister mentioned Act 6. Act 6 is telling you, well, Act 6 and 7 tell you how to become a Moorish American and how to, um, like, what it, what it means, what it entails. Because in all honesty, like if somebody wants to join, like we'll ask towards the end of this if anybody wants to proclaim. But in all honesty, you know, it's like, do you, are you up to this? Are you up to the task? If this is too much for you, you need to hold your seat, right? Don't even join, you know, if, if it's too much for you, right? But Act 6 says, <clears throat> with us, all members must proclaim their nationality. And we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed that they may know that they are part and partial of this said government, speaking about our government. 
and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians because these names were given to them by slaves and slaveholders in 1779, lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. This is a proclamation too, because this is, but this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim their free national names to be recognized by the government they live in. Uh, excuse me, by the government in which they live in and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained noble Drew Ali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Then Act 7, pretty much given the requirements to be a faithful member. Right, a membership is synonymous with citizenship within our nation. All members must promptly attend their meetings and become a part and partial of all uplifting acts of the more science temple of America. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the more science temple of America. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful husband. You must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become a part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, Noble Drew Ali, through the guidance of his father, God Allah. This is what it takes, right? With us, everyone, you know, he's saying with us, he's talking about the Moor Science Temple of America. This is where you come and proclaim your nationality. And we're not just teaching people, right? This is where the government is. It all comes through here. And so, you know, the prerequisites, all of this stuff is given and explained, even how we govern ourselves. This is all in our holy books and then throughout the various proclamations the prophet has. So this is what we teach. And this is what we work to build and um, live off of, you know, for ourselves and for, you know, the communities that we that we want to build. This is what it takes to be a you know a true Moorish American. So um, on that note, though, I, I'm going to go ahead and yield the floor. Um, this, if anyone has any questions, um, whether they're about these chapters or anything else, feel free to speak. Islam. Um, I will just ask one more time if anyone has any questions you know don't be shy feel free to speak or feel free to ask your questions um also if you have any uh any comments anything you want to share it's long grass cheek this was a beautiful bill and it's a beautiful bill on uh just the understanding of being yourself or what the prophet instructed uh and just going through instruction it's just like anything like uh say for instance you can't play uh uno and uno got certain rules and you just want to make your own rules or monopoly or anything else so what the prophet laid down were real simple rules I mean, Islam is in in our aspect as Moorish Americans, Islam is a very simple faith. And it it really is the five principles of the creed that you live by and the constitution. Islam, are you at the floor? Yeah. Islam, I just wanted to have something to add to us. It's like by us being like the original people here. And basically, in my um, opinion, it seems like we're already here because of the big lie that they told, because you got to think about it. They said, like, millions of us came here on slave ships. But my thing is, is where's all these slave ships at? Because basically, you have proof of that they don't show all these slave ships. And I probably only seen, like, one. But it's like there's there's not that many slave ships for all the so-called slaves that they bought over here or supposedly bought to America. But with that, I give up the mic. Islam, brother. Yes. Uh, Islam, I yield the floor. Go, go ahead. Oh, 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 Islam, brother, I just wanted to say one simple thing. All you got to do is just do the science and the math on that. Ask any of your elders who was a slave. Islam, I did that three years ago, and I got crickets. So we already know we were here. Islam, just ask. Just all you got to do, go back and ask. And, and, and if anybody 
I would love to talk to the person that really was a slave, Islam. And because of that, and even if it was slavery or during slavery, even my people in my side, it went both ways. So it was more of a employment thing that was like a wrong thing going on. And they made it be a certain thing to keep us down. Islam, I yield the floor. Islam, I saw uh, Sister Douglas Hill had her hand up. Islam, haven't already risen. Um, I like to add to this administration um, to kind of camel back off of both, what both brothers said. Because um, in my travels, you know, uh, we actually lived abroad and everything. We, we kind of... Um, we're opened up to the the truth about slavery and how there are many moving parts. You know, the story that they tell us is only half of it. And then in that half, there's a lot of falsehood mixed with truth as well. But we have to understand the more we dig up this information about um, history, we learn that um, the slave trade was happening between the Caribbean the, and North America as well as South America. So they were moving people around not only from state to state in North America, but from the Caribbean to the state and then from the Caribbean and the states to South America and from South America up here, because I'm telling you, when we went to Brazil, you see people that look just like people in Mississippi. And you're like, whoa, you know, um, it's crazy. And then learning about, um, you know, my family's from the Caribbean and learning about like the history of Louisiana and, you know, the Southern states, Florida, you know, like they have a lot of Caribbean um, bloodlines, you know, like if you even talk to um, a member of the Gullah Geechee tribe, they talk just like Jamaicans for real. And, you know, it's just like the history and the cultures were mixed. And a lot of the carnivals that I've seen with my own eyes is people who look like us and darker from all over the world doing the same exact thing. They dress the same, they party the same, like, <laughs> you know, they dress like the Native American tribes that they showed us, right? With the feathers and, you know, all the gold and, you know, all the accessories. They do that in Toronto. They do that in Louisiana. They do that in Haiti. They do that, you know, all through the Caribbean. They do that in Brazil. And it's like, a lot of these people don't travel, you know? They don't know what all these other people that look like them around the world, they don't know that they're doing the same exact thing at almost the same exact time. And so, you know, we start putting those uh, pieces of the puzzles together and like a lot of the slave trade was on paper, you know. Um, there was a sister that was interviewed by my husband and she said, she found her family on um, the document called the DOS Rolls, you know, where it was clearly um, documented that her family, where it said Indian or Native American, you know, a couple of years later, the same exact people from the same exact houses or whatever were reclassified as Negroes. So, definitely look some of this stuff up because what the brother said, our elders and our families, they'll let you know that we have Indian and Native American um, ancestry, right? And yes, we're not saying the Africans weren't coming over here too, because yeah, we know that they were, but we have to remember a lot of them were coming here before the European for, for trade as free people as well as on my other floor. Islam, sister, gratitude, gratitude for sharing that. Uh, brother Kobe, I see you, brother Islam. 
And it's fine. I definitely got to count one back on that. My great grandmother was born in 1901. Uh, I live, uh, we live with her we, you know, in California, and that's where she was from. And my great great grandparents and that were from there. So, like, when they talk about slave trade, like, how could somebody from California to go to Mississippi? And when my mom, even though she got caught up into that Alice Haley, the whole Ruth thing, and she was born in 1948, and I could talk to her about it even then. I'm like, we living with my great grandma, and how can you say the only reason that she, people from Africa, because this is what she was always arguing with me that people are from Africa. Okay, we from Africa. How could we be from Africa if she's from California and her great great grandparents and everybody from California? How do these people to go to Mississippi and just say they talk different? Not a different language. They just talk different and they act a certain way. So when they come to that, and it's like because of the fact that they were like, all right, I'm gonna come over here because of the bloodline. And I can remember when I was like a second grade, I had to do a family tree. And they asked about uh, during the Depression. And during the, the Great Depression, my people wasn't suffering. They weave baskets. They did the natural thing more. But just really wasn't saying it. Just was doing it. Like, and a lot of people just saying Native American. Like, oh, just Native American, you Indian. You know what I'm saying? You Indian, you got Indian, and then you Indian. And even on my dad's side, same way Arkansas, Indian, just a different type of Indian. So they did it a different way to where like, they would say like the Europeans never really ran anything as far as in a town. Like they would always, like they would say like only story they would say about a European was like, if you go to town, if you were a little kid, they would try to hustle you. Like, so say if you try to, sell your pecan baskets for three dollars a basket they, they would try to con you because you was a kid for 75 cent a basket like that type of thing and then your grandfather come and he was an indian and then they would say oh that was a native american he's a native american he's gonna come and he's gonna lay the law down and that was that in the town that's all i knew like from me growing up Islam, I yield the floor. Islam. Islam, gratitude to you both for sharing. Um, before we go into the closing, I do want to open up the floor to any more questions or comments. If anyone um, has any questions or comments, feel free to speak. Okay, Islam, if there's no more questions or comments, I want to announce well, without further ado, we're going to go into the closing of the meeting. Okay, hang on more as we're going to read the divine warning. Um, don't go anywhere. A divine warning by the prophet for the nations. The citizens of all free national governments, according to their national constitution, are all of one family bearing one free national name. Those who fail to recognize the free national name of their constitutional government are classed as undesirables and are subject to all inferior names and abuses and mistreatments that the citizens care to bestow upon them. And it is a sin for any group of people to violate the national constitutional laws of a free national government and cling to the names and the principles that delude to slavery. I, the prophet, was prepared by the great God Allah to warn my people to repent from their sinful ways and go back to the state of mind, to their forefathers' divine and national principles, that they will be law abiders and receive their divine right as citizens according to the free national constitution that was prepared 
for all free national beings. They are to claim their own free national name and religion. There is but one issue for them to be recognized by this government and of the earth, and it comes only through the connection of the Moorish Divine National Movement, which is incorporated in this government and recognized by all other nations of the world. And through it, they and their children can receive their divine rights unmolested by other citizens that they can cast a free national ballot at the polls under the free national constitution of the state's government and not under a granted privilege as has been the existing condition for many generations. You who doubt whether I the prophet and my principles are right for the redemption of my people, go to those that know the law in the city hall and among the officials in your government and ask them under an intelligent tone and they will be glad to render you a favorable reply for they are glad to see me bring you out of darkness into light. Money doesn't make the man. It is free national standards and power that makes a man and a nation. The wealth of all national governments, gold and silver and commerce, belong to the citizens alone. And without your national citizenship, by name and principles, you have no true wealth. And I am hereby calling on all true citizens that stand for a national free government and the enforcement of the Constitution to help me in my great missionary work because I need all support from all true American citizens of the United States of America. Help me to save my people who have fallen from the constitutional laws of the government. I am depending on your support to get them back to the...
Islam, pro apologize for that for everybody uh, watching. Let's get that back up. Not sure what happened there. Problems with the connection, but uh, let's. We were reading the divine warning. Islam. Islam, gratitude to you both for sharing. Um, I am depending on your support to get them back to the constitutional fold again, that they will learn to love instead of hate and will live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, supporting our free national constitution of the United States of America. I love my people, and I desire their unity and mine back to their own free national and divine standard, because day by day, they have been violating the national and constitutional laws of their government by claiming names and principles that are unconstitutional. If Italians, Greeks, English, Chinese, Japanese, Turks, and Arabians are forced to proclaim their free national name and religion before the constitutional government of the United States of America. It is no more than right that the law should be enforced upon all other American citizens alike. In all other governments, when a man is born and raised there and asks for his national descent name, and if he fails to give it, he is misused, imprisoned, or exiled. Any group of people that fail to answer up to the constitutional standards of law by name and principles, because to be a citizen of any government, you must claim your national descent name, because they place their trust upon issue and names formed by their forefathers. The word Negro deludes in the Latin language to the word nigger. The same as the word colored deludes to anything that is painted, varnished, and dyed. And every nation must bear a national descent name of their forefathers, because honoring thy fathers and thy mothers, your days will be lengthened upon this earth. These names have never been recognized by any true American citizens of this day. Through your free national name, you are known and recognized by all nations of the earth that are recognized by said national government in which they live. The 14th and 15th Amendments brought the North and South in unit, placing the Southerners, who were at that time without power, with the constitutional body of power. And at that time, 1865, the free national constitutional law that was enforced since 1774 declared all men equal and free. And if all men are declared by the free national constitution to be free and equal, since that constitution has then changed the 14th and 15th amendments for the salvation of our people and citizens so there isn't but one supreme issue for my people to use to redeem that which was lost and that is through the above statements then the lion and the lamb can lie down together in yonder hills and neither will be harmed because love truth peace freedom and justice will be reigning in this land in those days, the United States will be one of the greatest civilized and prosperous governments of the world. But if the above principles are not carried out by the citizens and my people in this government, the worst is yet to come. Because the great God of the universe is not pleased with the works that are being performed in North America by my people. And this great sin must be removed from the land to save it from enormous earthquakes, disease, ETC. And I, the prophet, do hear and believe that this administration of the government, being more wisely prepared by more genius citizens that believe in their free national constitution and laws, and through the help of such class, truly believe that my people will find the true and divine way of their forefathers and learn to stop serving carnal customs and merely ideas of man that have never done them any good but have always harmed them. So I, the prophet, am hereby calling aloud with the divine plea to all true American citizens to help me to remove this great sin which has been committed and is being practiced by my people in the United States of America because they know it is not the true and divine way. And without understanding, they have fallen from the true light into utter darkness of sin. And there is not a nation on earth today that will recognize them socially, religiously, politically, or economically, ETC, in their present condition of their endeavorment in which they themselves try to force upon a civilized world. 
They will not refrain from their sinful ways of action and their deeds have brought Jim Crowism. There and it is the works of my people continuously practicing the things which bring dishonor, disgrace, and disrespect to any nation that lives the life. And I am hereby calling on all true American citizens for moral support and finance to help me in my great missionary work to bring my people out of darkness into marvelous light. From the Prophet. Okay, Islam Moors. Um want to thank everybody for attending. Um, I do want to put out a call for collections for anyone um, who's able to please send donations. Uh, just go to MoorishAmericans.com and at the top you can click where it says Temple Dues. And if you scroll down you can use that donate button or that QR code to send donations. I will put that in the chat right now. Okay, uh, oh, for the brother asking about the blog, I'll put that in here too. Okay, so yeah, I just put the link though for the for the website, websites, morishamericans.com. If you go there and go to Temple Dues, you can send a donation to our temple. We would greatly appreciate it. And then um, also, we have fezes. Um, you can order a fez and we will ship it to you. Just go to moorishfez.com and we ship those. We actually ship those um, worldwide. So um, you can go there to moorishfez.com to get your fez. And we have um, we have an extra large uh, eight and a half size too that's big enough to fit uh, brothers with dreadlocks. So make sure you go there, moorishfez.com. And then also, if anyone, I want to put that call out there for new members. If anyone is uh, ready to join and proclaim your nationality, if there's anyone who's ready to proclaim your nationality, okay. All right, more. So let's go ahead and close out. All meetings are to be opened and closed promptly according to the circle seven in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. I want to ask everyone to please stand and face the east for the closing prayer. You do not need to repeat after me. We stand, uh, Moorish Americans stand with their heels together, feet at a 45 degree angle, and then holding our arms up in a cactus pose with two fingers on the right, five on the left. Allah, bind our hearts and minds back to our ancient forefathers, divine creed and principles. We ask this in thy holy name and the seven Elohim. Amen. Amen. Islam, Moors, happy holy day. Peace and love. Happy holy day, Muslims. Peace and love. Peace and love. Happy holy day. Happy holy day. Happy holy day. Peace and love. Happy holiday. Peace and love. Peace and holiday. Peace, happy holiday. Happy holiday. Happy holiday.